How do you do? Um, so, um, you may notice that I, I have new glasses and that they're a bit small. It's because I can't find my other ones. I mean, like, I probably could, and I should be looking for them right now, but I don't really want to. I want to do other stuff. Again, lazy. Um, anyway, as the title suggests, episode Star Wars, episode 8. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it okay? Um, if you don't understand that, um... Yeah, basically, uh, a couple months ago for Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta, I made a video called Star Wars Battlefront 2. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? Um, I need to review Star Wars Battlefront 2015. I feel like I'm one of the only people, a few people, that actually enjoy playing it still. <laughs> um, I haven't played it in a couple months. I should probably do that and and look for my glasses instead of be making this video, but I don't I don't feel like it. Um Star Wars episode 8 when I first watched it I I I I had nothing but great feelings towards it. And then something happened something not necessarily bad but not necessarily good at the same time so in the in the beginning um there's this giant ship i think it's called i don't remember what it's called but it's for the um first order i keep wanting to say empire um but for the em empire the first order they have this giant ship and like Poe Dameron, he's flying his X-wing with a group of other flying people, uh, pilots. I think they're called. <laughs> um, they're they're basically bomb squadron, or they're basically uh, gold squadron. Uh, hold on, I have something. They're basically the um, the rebel. Uh, in the first trilogy, the original trilogy, they're basically, they fly the Y-Wings, which this one has got its guns, even has a little bomb down here, so watch. No, I'm not going to fire that at the camera, I'm just going to. Basically, the bomb squadron in, Ro in Rogue One, Rogue, oh yeah, but that's because I watched Rogue One recently. Um, that's because the bomb, uh, the bomb squadron in episode 8, The Last Jedi, um, they all get died. They all blow up. <laughs> and not just the men, but the women and the children, not the children, too. And they die like animals. <laughs> oh my god, I, I, I feel like I need to review episode 2. Um, not just episode 2, but episode 1, 2, and 3. Those are some bad movies. Except episode 3, I kind of like it. Maybe it's because I watched it as a small child. And I have some positive feelings towards it. As you do with anything. That you've seen and you liked as a small child. And you find it again. You're like, oh, I like that. That's cool. Even though some other people might say, oh, episode 3 is like, it's like a freaking stupid thing. I'm I'm trying to come up with metaphors, but it's just not working. Um, But again, uh, the entire bomb squadron dies in the beginning. But then the the first order comes and shoots down the uh the res no they aren't called the resistance anymore they're called the rebellion which why not why why not can we just well, let's just call it first order empire again boom shaka boom blah 
But the First Order shoots down the Rebellion's big ships. Their, their, um, their main ship, I think it was. They shoot the bridge where, like, everything happens. And the thing is, Leia and Akbar are on the bridge at that time. Akbar dies. They killed off Akbar. They. <sighs> Why? I get it. His voice actor's dead. He he didn't have a line in this movie. I don't think. And again, my hair is a mess. But <sighs> that's what you get when you don't comb it. Um. Akbar dies, and Leia, surprisingly, doesn't die. Why not? Why not? There's this one scene right after uh, she's been, the bridge is blown up. Leia's floating in space, then you see her hand moving like that. And then she reaches out with her hand and pulls herself towards the door. She looks like freaking Superman. And I'm like, okay, that's that's cool. And then I'm like, wouldn't it have been more powerful if she had just died then? But no, because nobody knew that Carrie Fisher was going to die before they uh, filmed this movie. And that's why she's in it. And she plays a fantastic character. May she rest in peace, my god. Why does she have to die? Hon honestly, I, I cried when I saw her. No, not when I saw her. When I heard that she died, I cried. She was just this, just part of my childhood. Even though I didn't grow up with the original trilogy, it's like, okay, cool. I like Leia. I like Luke. I like Han. Oh, Leia's dead now. The character of Leia, the person who played Leia is dead now, and it's just... I didn't, that day was a bad day. 2016, in complete honesty, was just terrible. Um, I'm not going to get into that because I have a review to finish. Um, <clears throat> but seriously, her reaching out with the force towards a door, I just felt like, oh, okay, she, she can fly now and she can breathe in space. I get it, she could have used the force technique to hold her breath in space. But I feel like she should have died in that part. But then you see her in a medical bay, and she's all fine, and it's like, okay. And then uh, General Haldo, I think her name was, the girl with the purple hair who's played by the same person who plays Ellie Sadler in Jurassic Park. Fantastic movie. Um... She has, she said, oh, I'm in command now, so get out of here, Poe Dameron, with your stupid plan. He actually had a great plan, in my, my idea. He had a great plan. But, um, she, she just shoots it down. She takes, dang, I was gonna make a joke about, like, I have an, an EE3, I think it's called, an EE3 prop record. R replica. If you don't know what an EE3 is, it's basically Boba Fett's gun. But, uh, I painted it up to make it look cool. And, like, now it's over there and I don't want to get it. It's like... <sighs> she just basically takes a gun to it. Bam, bam, it's done. Um. Now, um, then... Finn and his new character Rose, played by this um I forget her name. I and I'm sorry about that, but um she's played by somebody. She's an she's okay in this movie. I'm not gonna say she's the best, cause she's not. And um well Rose uh is like a maintenance worker in their in the rebellion's new flagship um and her sister was one of the bomb uh bombers that died so 
and she's all broken up about it and then she meets Finn and they like get together kind of I just the whole subplot with Ray Ray not Ray Ray was fantastic I'm getting to her um the whole subplot with uh, Finn and Rose was just it felt kind of weird you know they're they're played up to be these funny people and and I'm sure they are in real life and they are a bit in this movie but the comedy they just make too many jokes in this movie I'm serious this movie was portrayed to be a darker t tale in the Star Wars um, story and then you have Rose and Finn and they're just going so I was um I had blah 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 and then Finn goes ah ha 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 by the way, John Boyega has a hilarious laugh. If you haven't seen it, go check out, like, uh, a video where he laughs. It's funny. Um, but, and then they have to, they have a plan to, like, because the, the First Order has, like, this thing that can track the, uh, Rebellion star, uh, main ship, flagship, through hypers, through them going through hyperspace. I think it's called? Yeah them going through light speed they can track them still so finn it's like oh if we can get on there we can shut it down but there's a code <clears throat> on the door locking us out so they contact Ma maz can maz is it maz or maz 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 canada the uh weird alien brown alien girl with the weird goggles and they like, hey Maz, where can we find some uh, some people, like a code ca a code cracker, and it's like, and she's like, oh, go to Casino Planet, and they do, and they spend thirty minutes on a planet that would be useless. Thirty minutes just for filler on this planet this new planet i don't even re care to remember its name it's basically casino planet it's what i'm gonna refer it to they spend 30 minutes on casino planet 30 minutes when they didn't have to because they find the code cracker but he's too busy gambling to go with them so they find they get thrown in jail for some stupid reason oh yeah they park their ship on the beach and they get thrown in jail for that i can't sometimes that was a bit stupid subplot um and then they meet the actual code cracker I guess I don't know his name is DJ he's played by some person don't remember his name he's not an important character at all because he gets them onto um I think it's Snoke's ship yeah yeah and then uh what's it called the dominator I think or something it's like 23 miles wide he might be compensating for something um and by him, I mean Snoke. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, this DJ character, he he unlocks the door, and then it's found out. Oh, he sold uh, Rose and Finn out to the First Order. So really, he didn't need to be there. They could have just gone to the Dominator again. It might not be what it's called. They could have just gone there and got ca got captured. The story would have been the same just without 30 minutes of it. But then the ending part wouldn't be the same, I hear you say, if you've seen it. Well, who cares? Honestly, they probably won't do anything with that kid at the end. Who uses the force to grab a broom. And he sees a shooting star. Psh! Honestly, I think that's a ship going in hyperspace. A lot of people saying, oh, that's Luke. That's Luke. He's transcending into the Force. 
No. That's a that's a ship. At least for me it's a ship. In my opinion, it's the best. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's mean. Um Uh so yeah, they spend thirty minutes on something that they didn't have to stop moving them. But um then they do stuff the the bit I liked the most was when um Ray and Luke were training or Luke was training Ray, then he has the line I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. One of the best parts of it was um I have to go get something. So, um, if you've seen The Force Awakens, you know that it ends with Rey handing Luke the, this thing, this, the, Anik the Skywalker family lightsaber, and she's like, but in, in, we don't see him pick it up in The Force Awakens, but when we, we do in, um, episode 8, in The Last Jedi, he just takes it, and he chunks it behind him, and it's funny. It's like, this thing that all of us as fans care about so much. He just chunks it behind his head. Doesn't even bat an eye at it. That proves that he doesn't care about the Jedi anymore. And it's done super well. The thing, the only thing is, I feel like Mark Hamill was given too much freedom at some points. Like, this is one point where he goes up to this cow and he milks it. This cow looking thing. I don't think it's a cow. But he milks it. Then he drinks it straight. And he's like. And he's like. And it's just dripping down his beard. It's like. Why? Why was that needed? I feel like that was something that Mark Hamill did without any instruction. And I mean like. He's Mark Hamill. How could you be mad at him? He's the Joker. He's. His name Arkham is literally in his name. Arkham Asylum, the Joker. He was destined to play the Joker, I'll tell you that. He can go from Mark Hamill to the Joker and... and just, like, just like that. Just like that. And it's... it's it's. I... I every time I hear his, his Joker voice, I just get excited. Like, ooh, we're about to see something good. But, um... The Ray and Luke training montages. I can't really say they're training montages. Which is cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, the Ray and Luke training scenes. Those were cool. Um, wish there was more of that. Like, for say, maybe 30 minutes more of it. Like, what if they cut out 30 minutes of something we didn't need? <coughs> Casino Planet. Um... Uh, I'm I'm just holding this right now. It's um cool. I've had this for next year. This will be ten years old. No wait wait. This is eleven years old. Um. Uh. But anyway, that was good. Kylo Ren was cool. The way that they killed Snoke was cool. I'm not gonna say how they did it because it's too cool. To like, and I need to finish this up. I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. One thing that bugged me is, um, they never said, nobody ever said in this movie, the, um, I have a bad feeling about this. Ruining the tradition. <clears throat> and there was no Wilhelm scream. Ryan Johnson! I'm going murdering.